What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use REPL with the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W without an IDE such as Thani, VS Code, or PyCharm. So for those guys who don't know what REPL is, it stands for Read, Evaluate, Print Loop, and it's a programming environment that allows you to interact, interact dynamically with the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W or any other microcontroller really to execute code snippets and see the results immediately and pretty much iterate quickly with short bits of code that you can compile and run and complete a program. So it's pretty cool and it could be a convenient way to prototype and to automate some things on your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W without an IDE. Now this is an extension of a previous video I did which I'll link right here where I showed how to use the AmPy library which is very similar to this. The main difference between this REPL library which is the R shell library based in Python and the, the library AmPy which I showed in this video that I linked up here is that the AmPy library is more, more file system management based, whereas this library, the REPL, uh, R shell library in Python, allows you to create these interactive sessions, these REPL sessions, and write code interactively, whereas the AmPy library really isn't built for that. It's built for more file management. So in this video, we'll be focusing more on the REPL. What's nice about this R shell library in Python is that not only does it allow us to write code in this interactive session, but we can also interact with the files as we saw in the AmPy video where I went over that other library. So this is a more general use case library and it can be pretty useful and it's really lightweight and easy setup. So the only prerequisites you need for this video are you need your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W, you need Python on your computer, you can use a Linux, a Mac, or a Windows machine, it doesn't matter, as long as you have Python on the computer, and you need MicroPython already on your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. And of course, you need it connected to your computer. So I already have all that, and you can see on this screen here, I am in a terminal on my Mac. If you're a Windows, you're gonna go to CMD, or any um, you know sort of environment you want to write uh, shell commands, which I think maybe it's only CMD, but there's probably other ones, third-party ones you could download on Windows. On Mac, we're gonna use terminal. So we're already in a terminal, and what we're going to do first is I already have Python on my machine and we want to get the library, the Python library, as I mentioned, to start writing code with this REPL environment. And that is the R shell library. It's a very popular library to do this sort of thing. And those of you guys who are watching this video probably may have worked with this library. So in order to do that, you just want to pip install that. So I already pip installed it, but I'll just show you the command I used to pip install that. I just used pip3 to install R shell. And it's as simple as that. So I have the library installed. And what's really nice about this library is we can go straight into it simply by typing R shell. So that's the first thing we do when we, when we want to start an interactive session with the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W using this library. Now, next thing we could do, I think we can run a help command that can show us the, the sort of the commands we can use in this library. So let's type help and see what it gives us, help. Okay, so let me move my head actually here because it's gonna be getting in the way. And we can see we have actually a bunch of commands where we can do other things on the device like Linux level or Unix level commands that you may be familiar with if you've worked with the terminal before. We have the cat command, which is pretty cool. We have echo. We can see the file sizes on the device. And of course, the main command we're gonna be working with today is REPL, which creates the interactive environment that allows us to um, write MicroPython code in real time quickly quick prototyping. So these are a lot of commands you can use. Uh, I'll show you guys how to use some of these commands, maybe just the CP command, which allows you to copy files from your local computer to your device. And this will be really useful when you want libraries online or you're writing some code from your local computer and you wanna copy it quickly to your device. You can just use this copy command to connect files from your computer to your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're just gonna type REPL, okay? And if you've been working with Thani, and if you used Thani before, this is the same environment that's in the, the box on the bottom of Thani. So you can actually write REPL. Um, you can actually enter a programming environment, REPL, in Thani, but just by on the bottom of the screen, it's usually there if you, in the base version of Thani, and you can just start writing code like this. So of course, first, the first thing we want to do is print hello world. So let's say print hello world. And this is actually executing on the device, which is pretty cool. So we can just go ahead and print hello world. So it's really as simple as that. Another thing we can do is we can just write a program to blink the LED. So just like you're interacting with the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W as you have in Thani, you can do the same way here. If you have been working with Thani, you can access the same libraries if you have MicroPython flash onto the device. 
So I'm just going to say for machine import pin, and I'm going to say LED to get the LED. And actually, because we're working with the Raspberry Pi Pico, I think it's just LED. So let's just do that. And let's do LED toggle. So LED toggle is, it turns on the LED if it's off and off if it's on. So let's just do this. So I'm just gonna show you my device here. Let me actually unplug my sensors from this. So here is my Raspberry Pi Pico W right there. So I'm just gonna run this command again. So what's cool about REPL is if I just hit up on my keyboard, I can get the same command I just worked with. So I just hit up, and if I hit up again, I can get the previous command. So LED.toggle again, we can see that it turned off. And one more time for proof, turns it on. So pretty easy, that's just a very simple thing we can do. And we could pretty much write all the MicroPython code we want on this device. And one thing you may be wondering is like, how do you get third party code? Well, I already mentioned it at the beginning of this video is you have to CP it over to the device so we can find that code. Unlike Thani, which gives us a nice way to install some libraries with their UI, we actually have to do this manually with REPL, which can be somewhat inconvenient, but thankfully it's really easy to do such a thing. So the example I'm gonna go over here is we're just gonna exit this um, REPL environment, so I think it's just Control X. So now we're back just to the R shell. So one of the commands it shows us is we can actually see the, the files in the Pi board, first of all. So ls is just looking at the files in the device. So we can see we have a bunch of files here. I've been working with this Raspberry Pi Pico W for a long time, and you can see there's a bunch of files. And we can actually, these are other directories, so where you want to have your library code is probably in the lib directory. So let's just say ls lib. Let's see what's in there. Oh, sorry about that. So that'll show us all the libraries we have. I had a BME280 library I was working with and uh, MQ135 library, so that's pretty cool. Now let's see the, the files on my local device. So let's just do ls. So this is my local computer. And we're just gonna go to desktop. And let's see what file we want to move over here. So um, let's see, uh, what are some Pico files I have on my, okay, so some circuit Python files, so let's do that. So let's see what's in that folder. So we have some circuit Python files. And I'm just going to copy one of these files, let's say the constants file, over to my device. So in order to do that, it's actually really simple. And, okay, I don't know why it's deleting like that. We can just type the command copy, and we're just gonna do desktop, and we'll do circuit Python files. And by the way, I'm auto-completing by just clicking tab on my keyboard, so that's a nice thing about this um, interface for, for our shell, is you can just do tab and it can auto-complete. And then we're just going to type constants, and then we're just going to move that to our Pi board. So let's just do Pi board. And let's move it into the lib folder. And let's type enter and give it a sec. So let's go back into that. Let's ls back into the lib folder of our Pi board. And we could probably see the constants file. Okay, wait. Actually, let me clear this. Can we clear that? We should see that, let's try that again. ls, pi board, lib. Okay, so that's weird, I don't know why I didn't copy over. Let's try that again. Let's try cp, desktop, uh, circuit Python files, and let's try constants. And let's once again do pi board. Maybe I, I miswrote the command or something. And lib, and let's just do Oh, you actually have to specify the name of the file when you do CP. My apologies. So let's just call it constants. I've made this mistake before, I think, in the previous video. So let's go back into that ls, and we could probably see the constants file is there. I'm not going to show what's in the constants file because it has a bunch of probably sensitive information in terms of passwords for my emails and that sort of thing. But that's a nice way you can just copy library code onto your device using this REPL interface. I mean, there's many other commands you can use that you could go ahead and play with. So I'm just gonna type in help. And we can see, once again, as I showed at the beginning of this video, there's so many other things, um, such as boards, uh, file size, uh, mkdir to make directories, to remove files with rm, and that sort of thing. So it's a pretty powerful library, and it gives you a nice way to start prototyping and can, some ha and can have some use cases in automation. 
So I hope, you, I hope you guys learned pretty much how to use REPL quickly without an IDE with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. If you have any questions or suggestions or want an extension of this video, let me know in the comment section down below. I know we went over it pretty quickly and you can get more advanced with this REPL interface, but it can have some use cases. I personally don't use it that much. I know some people do. I stick to VS Code now because I like using GitHub Copilot with that because that's a nice extension and I, I do use Thani occasionally now. But overall, I think this can have some use cases. And if it does, put a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not. Stay tuned, guys, and thanks for watching. Take it easy. Thank you.